All right, guys, we are back to another episode of Code Like a Pro, where we're covering the solid principles, and we're now on the open close principle. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is the general idea for the open close principle? Well, uh, you've probably heard this if you've ever heard of the open close principle many, many times, but software should be open for extension, but closed for modification. I'm using software very generally. We're talking about classes, we're talking about modules, um, pretty much any anything, any aspect of software that's reusable, we wanna make it open to expand upon, but closed to modify that original um, level of code. So what does that really mean? Well, what it means is, um, and this is my interpretation, but essentially means we want to extend the code so that we don't have to refactor legacy code. Legacy code being code that was there before we started writing our code, before we started expanding upon this. And this is especially um, helpful, not necessarily in greenfield development, but when you are adding new features to code or refactoring code. So what does this actually mean, right? Uh, what it actually means is the successful use of inheritance properly. You know, how we can extend things using inheritance makes it allow, um, gives us some flexibility to make our code more, wait for it, solid. Uh, um, and it allows us to change our code easier and allow these changes to occur easier, easily rather, so that we don't have to worry about it breaking and. Um, it being an issue to jump into the code and we have to, um, we don't have to update it in multiple spots. And that's this last note here is a well-written class should not have to be updated in multiple spots. Now, again, these are principles. These are not the end all be all. There's always exceptions to the rules or exceptions to the principles, but these are the general things that it will actually allow us to do. So. Uh, let's go ahead and just make a quick note. Um, solid principles are, a lot of people have preached about them, but one person in particular is Uncle Bob, or uh, Robert Martin, as you might know him. And his blog post here goes into greater detail on the open close principle. And I would highly encourage you to check it out just to have a, you know, multiple interpretations of it. I'm going to give you my interpretation of it, and you can get um, someone who's much more uh, familiar with it than myself um, because he's been preaching about it for about 15 20 years uh, but that's a lot of words let's go ahead and give a live example I want to thank our long-term sponsor Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp I've been partnered with Dev Mountain for quite some time now and I've had the pleasure of interviewing several of their devs who have gotten jobs and started their careers and really just uh, done the damn thing, as we like to say. So if you're interested in doing that, check their full stack JavaScript web dev courses out or their iOS or their UI UX or quality assurance or Salesforce. They have online programs. They have uh, tuition programs where housing is included. So check them out at devmountain.com. Now let's jump back into our previous example with the cache register. You'll notice here that I've added a constructor that's going to take a balance and we're going to, it's going to be a number, the balance of the drawer essentially. And so a, a bad example of how we would be modifying our code is exactly like this, right? And so we might have a balance property here and we're gonna assign that to a number, and it's somewhat relevant, right? So we're gonna say like this dot balance is equal to the balance that comes in. But now what's happening is here, we're actually modifying the original code. And this will happen again and again as we continue to expand upon our cache register example. But you may be saying like, Dylan, well, shouldn't the balance be part of the cache register? And isn't gonna need, um, you know, subtotal tax rate, maybe the grand total because we may have to you know, find out if we have enough cash in the drawer. But by modifying this, we're now adding complexity to the cash register that maybe what we really need to do is define a drawer class that extends the cash register that inherits from that. And that's where the balance lives because it's sort of new functionality that we can actually make it a little bit more, um, a little bit of a smaller class while still having access to that. So let's go ahead and do that because that's gonna show an example. Here we showed an example of what we don't want to do. Um, we want it to be close to modification. Well, how would we make this uh, open for extension? 
All right, and to do that, let's go ahead and just create a little uh, file here. And we'll call this drawer, cache drawer, if we want. And what we're going to do here is we're going to export this class here. Um, I guess we don't technically have to export it, but uh, we'll call it our cache drawer. Cache drawer, drawer. I don't know. Someone will correct me in the comments, I have no doubt. And in our constructor here, we'll go ahead and essentially do the same thing that we did. It's going to be a number. And we'll go ahead and uh, have a property here public balance. We'll make that a number and then we'll set it. So this dot number is equal to balance. Oh, this dot balance, excuse me. This dot balance is equal to balance. Cool. And now uh, let's go ahead and take this out of here because we don't want that in there because that would be extending it. But here we just need to extend our original cache register. And when we're doing, at least in TypeScript, when we're extending a class, we need to call super, which is just essentially saying that this is a child or being extended from our cache register, which is the uh, parent here. And now, although we have all the access to subtotal tax rate calculate total, but it has its own draw. We have our own drawer here where maybe we need to use some of those properties later on. We will, we can have access to that. We can reference them here and not have any issues. And we've successfully been able to extend the cache register class without actually modifying it. So open for extension, close for modification. Now this is just one example and a very simple one at that. But these are the sort of things that you need to think about as you're developing code, right? Um, what separates a junior developer from a senior developer is the ability to not only make the code run, but both of you will have your code running, but having something that is going to uh, last the tests of time to the best of our ability, be easy and maintainable and testable to, and um, allows change in a much more simplistic fashion. So that's the open close principle. Up next, we'll be doing Liskov substitution principle, and that'll be a lot of fun. See you guys next time. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and share the videos to help the channel out. I appreciate it a ton. Bye, guys. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.